All right, welcome everyone. This is my video about 16.6. We're gonna do an exam question. This is from spring 2016, so only a little while ago. In this problem, we're described, right, we have some surface and it's given to us in parametric form. So our parametrized surface is UV, uh, sorry, R of UV is equal to, and we have the vector UV, comma v, comma u, and the claim is u squared plus v squared should be less than or equal to one. And the question is, what is the surface area of the surface? Okay, so surface area, we need to remember surface area, this is gonna be the integral of one ds. And the claim is we will actually upgrade this and do you know surface integrals, and that's gonna be in 16.7, but for now we're just doing surface area. And so for surface area, there are always two ways to do surface area. Either if you're giving parametric equation for the surface, or if you're given an explicit equation for the surface. And the claim is the explicit one is a little bit nicer, but sadly we've been given a parametric version. So we're gonna to have to use the parametrized equation for surface area. So let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to be doing the double integral. And remember, this is going to be the magnitude of the cross product of the partial derivatives of our parametrization. And then we're going to integrate with respect to u and v over this region. Okay, let me go ahead and do a little sketch here. It's a little bit weird. We have the uv plane fine. And we have, let's see, u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to one. Equaling one would be the circle of radius one centered at the origin, but we want less than or equal to. So this is the region that we're integrating over. This is our d right here. So we're going to go ahead and worry about uh, transforming this here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and we have some work ahead of us, right? We need to calculate out the cross products, some partial derivatives, the magnitude, right? We have quite a few things to do. So let's go ahead and get started on that. And then we'll worry about evaluating out this double integral. And side note, I'm starting to see why this was, you know, worth so many points on this exam. I mean, still, I think this is back when the exams were out of 150 points, but still a lot of points. So, okay. We have our parametrization. We need to calculate out some partial derivatives. Partial derivative with respect to u, partial derivative with respect to v. So again, I'm looking up here, trying to calculate out partial derivative with respect to u. I think I'm going to get v, 0, 1. Partial derivative with respect to v. I think I'm going to get u, 1, 0. So now I've calculated out my partial derivatives. Next on the docket, right, I need to take the cross product between these things. So cross product, I'm gonna have i's, j's, k's, r sub u first. So that's gonna be v zero one, and then u one zero. Take the cross product. So I'm gonna have stuff with i's, minus stuff with j's, plus stuff with k's. So if I cross off the first row and the first column, I'm gonna have, let's see, zero, zero, uh, minus one, one, so zero minus one. All right, let's go ahead and erase these lines. Gonna be crossing off the first row and the second column. V times zero, that's gonna be zero, minus one times U, that's gonna be negative U. All right, first off, cross off the first row and the third column, I'm gonna have v times one, that's v minus zero times u, that's zero. So all together, when I take this cross product, I'm gonna have negative one, u, v. Finally, the last thing that I need to do is take the magnitude of this cross product. So the magnitude of r sub u cross r sub v is gonna be equal to, and I take the magnitude of my result here, so one squared, sorry, negative one squared, u squared, v squared, add those all together, slap them under a square root, and there is my magnitude. All right, so all that to say that I'm gonna be doing the double integral of the square root of one plus u squared plus v squared under that square root, dA, and then again, I'm gonna be integrating over this region D, which I have up here. So if I want to integrate over this region D, again, I probably don't want to evaluate uh, you know, an integral with respect to U and V, right? Uh, again, maybe it's even better to think about these in terms of you know, U's are our X's, V's are our Y's in this case. 
I think because it looks like we're over a circle, I want to go ahead and switch into polar equations, right? I would like to evaluate this out using polar. So if u is like my x, I'm going to try u is equal to r cosine theta. And if v is like my y, I'm going to try like v is equal to r sine theta. And I'm going to go ahead and switch these things right into r's and thetas, right? Because again, I see a circle here. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I switch this into polar, right? So I'm going to have dr and d theta. Again, when you make the switch into polar, right, you need to have that integration factor. So this is going to be r dr d theta. And then you're going to have the square root of 1 plus u squared plus v squared. Well, just like x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, so is u squared plus v squared. Right? Because again, they're taking kind of the place of my independent and dependent variables, my x's and my y's. So u squared plus v squared is going to be equal to r squared. If you're at all hesitant about this, you know, using these transformations right here, double check. u squared plus v squared. Again, you're going to have the sine squared and the cosine squared are together going to add to 1. Right? And so you're just going to have r squared left over. So indeed, u squared plus v squared is equal to r squared. Now this is a lot easier, right? Because again, we're integrating over this full circle. It has satisfied the equation u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 1. So this means it's a circle of radius 1, and we want to go all the way around. So my limits of integration should be r goes from 0 to 1, right? We're in the circle immediately at the origin, and we exit through the circle of radius 1. And then we go all the way around from 0 to 2 pi. So now we just need to evaluate this. Again, the setup, that's really the hard part. I mean, we spent all this time has been on setup. All of this is just setup. Now the evaluation, the claim is this is not so bad. So first of all, I notice that there are no thetas here. So I'm going to evaluate out my theta integral first, you know, kind of split this up into our two single integrals. And when I do that, evaluate out my theta integral, I'm just going to get 2 pi. Because again, there are no thetas. This is like integrating 1 and then plugging in 0 and 2 pi. Now, when I go ahead and evaluate out my integral from 0 to 1, maybe it helps to put this as 1 plus r squared all raised to the 1 half power. And we can see, really, that this is going to be like a u substitution, right? That I'm going to go ahead and maybe swap out this inside thing for u. Maybe u is not the right word. Maybe I would do like a w substitution, since u and v are already kind of claimed in this problem as specific things. But the idea is going to be a u substitution. Let's go ahead, I'm going to do the guess and check method for my u substitution, right? I'm going to take kind of the main component here, 1 plus r squared, and I'm going to have to raise that by 1 power, right? Because I'm taking the antiderivative. So let's double check. If I was to take the derivative of this, I want to get back to where I started. So if I took it the derivative, right, the first thing would be the 3 halves comes down, but I don't see a 3 halves up here, so I'd like to have something to cancel with that. I'm going to go ahead and put a 2 thirds. Okay, let's double check now. If I take the derivative, the 3 halves comes down, cancels with the 2 thirds, great. Reduce my power by 1, so it goes from 3 halves to 1 half, perfect. Leave the inside alone. Remember the chain rule says take the derivative of the outside function, leave the inside alone, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside, well the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of r squared is going to be 2r. Well I see I have that r, great, but I don't have that 2. Right, so I would like something to cancel with that 2, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 half. Okay, so now the 2 thirds cancels with when the 3 halves comes down, the 1 half cancels when the 2 comes down, and I think if I take the derivative of this, I do indeed get back to where I started. So again, this is just using the kind of the guess and check method um, for our u substitutions. If you're at all hesitant about this, again, you can just use the regular old u substitution, uh, but this claim is if you get good at this, it saves some time on quizzes and on exams and whatnot. And we're really here to test your Calc 3 knowledge, uh, not so much your Calc 1 uh, knowledge, right? Can you use u substitution correctly? So it's okay if you guess and check. All right, now let's go ahead and plug some things in. So first of all, you can see those twos, they will cancel out. So I'm going to have one third. And let's see, when I plug in one, I'm going to have one plus one squared. So that's going to be two raised to the three halves power. So it's going to be 2 raised to the 3 halves power. Subtract away. When I plug in 0, well, again, I have that 1 third out there. And when I plug in 0, I'm going to have 1 plus 0 squared. So it's going to be 1 raised to the 3 halves power. Well, 1 to really any power is just 1. And so my final answer, if you'd like to, you can factor out this 1 third. You have it in both terms. You can do 2 pi over 3. 
times 2 to the 3 halves minus 1. And that right there is my final answer. That is the area of the surface over this region. Again, you can check that this is a nice positive number, right? If you really wanted to, you could evaluate this a little bit farther, right? 2 to the third power would be 8. So, and then we have to take the 1 half power. So this is going to be like the square root of 8. That's going to be somewhere around the square root of 9, a.k.a. 3. So, I mean, this is going to be close to 3 minus 1. So that's going to be close to 2 altogether. So, yeah, you can approximate things if you would like and make sure, right, this is true surface area. So it should be a nice positive number. If you get a negative answer, be concerned. But this looks reasonable. I'm happy with this. So that's all there is to it. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.